So we're going to be making a whole cell lysate from our HeLa. In order to accomplish that, we're going to make something called a REPA buffer using TRIS, which is a buffer that'll keep everything in a nice pH of 8, and three detergents, one ionic SDS and two non-ionic Triton X100 and deoxycholate. These detergents will help us break apart the lipid-lipid-lipid protein-protein interactions within the cell that are going to keep us from lysing any of the membranes. We'll then add some sodium chloride, which will capture any ions that we don't want impacting our proteins. And then we will add our peptidase, peptidase and phosphatase inhibitors because we don't want our total proteins that we're harvesting from our whole cell lysate being eaten. Um, by these enzymes. This is our recipe and we're simply going to use our pipette men with tips to transfer these particular chemicals into the REPA tube. Okay, so I liquid transferred 150 microliters of TRIS, uh, 30 microliters of SDS, 750 microliters of deoxycholic acid, 450 microliters of sodium chloride, and 30 microliters of Triton into the REPA. I'm going to take a minute to talk to you about Triton. And this is our Triton X100. It's a solution that is very viscous. So a little trick in the lab that you can do is that when you're about to pipette your Triton, instead of just using this small bore on the yellow tip, you can just take a certain portion of that tip and cut it off um, with a pair of scissors and you end up increasing the bore size so that you can liquid transfer something that's pretty viscous. The solvent for REPA is distilled water and so I have made um, about 3 ml of a REPA base. And now I'm going to liquid transfer 3 microliters of our protease inhibitors, aprotonin and lupeptin, and I will liquid transfer in 30 microliters, be careful of your pipette men and what they're set to, of our othobenidate phosphatase inhibitor. Okay, and I do want to point out that these are very low volumes. So when you're looking at three microliters, it is going to be super low. And so when you go to put it in your tube, just kind of drizzle it on the edge. And you see that little drop of liquid? Make sure it goes into the container at the bottom, the liquid at the bottom. Okay, so that is what your three microliters is gonna look like. It's a super small amount of liquid. This is my peptin going in. And I'm just going to stick it into the side and kind of make another little drop. And I'll do my 30 microliters of ortho vanity. Okay, and so that's my REPA base, but what you'll notice is bubbles are being made because of the detergent, so don't be too aggressive about your stir or your gentle mix here. Everything now needs to go on ice, and I'm going to wait for that REPA to get kind of cold, because when we lice open a cell, we want to inactivate all of the enzymes, not inactivate them, just make them not be able to work. And one of the great ways to do that is put everything on ice because we know these are human enzymes. They'll work at 37 degrees Celsius, but not so well at 4 degrees. So I've cleaned up my area and now I'm ready for my actual lysis. I have my super cold REPA, my C60 of HeLa, a beaker with Lysol in it. I also have a something called a rubber policeman and I have my pipette man set with my tip and I'm ready for lysis. Best practice in cell biology is to take a quick peek and make sure you have cells. I have done so and I have cells. And the second thing that we always do is when we dispense of our spent media into our Lysol, it is always a very good idea to give those cells a quick rinse with PBS. Now these cells are stuck to the bottom so there's no problem doing that. And so we're going to kind of swirl it and get rid of that wash of PBS. Good. And now I'm going to grab 900 microliters of my reaper from my cold. And I'm going to dispense that onto my cells. When I put this onto the cells, I like to drizzle it on the side. I don't want to directly put it into the middle. I end up making a bunch of bubbles. So I'm going to put it onto the side and I'm going to swirl it. 
And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my rubber policeman and I'm going to go across the plate and then I'm going to turn it and then I'm going to go across the plate and then I'm going to turn it and then again and then a fourth time. And now what I've been doing is I've scraped up all the cells into the liquid. I'm going to cap my plate and now it's an important step and the important step is you better put that on ice because your cells are currently lysing and they are not happy because if they're not on ice all the enzymes are killing all your proteins. So they've been on ice for 10 minutes and I'm going to hedge my bets that it is time to scrape them again, make sure I get any remaining cells. If you want to reuse your rubber policeman, it is a non-consumable, um, so we need to reuse it. I spray it with a little tiny bit of ethanol and dry it off. Um, and I will once again, one, two, three, across the plate, turn it, across the plate, let me make sure this is right, across the plate, turn it. That was not a good across the plate. <laughs> across the plate, turn it, and across the plate, and back on ice you go for another five minutes. That's called babysitting your cells. So onto the ice, five more minutes. By that time, there'll be nothing left on the plate to see in the microscope, and we're just gonna harvest the whole cell lysate. So I labeled a temporary tube, WCL. I will be getting rid of it at the end, um, and I'm going to take this C60, I'm gonna use the lid to give myself a little tilt and I'll use my pipette man to kind of suck up that whole cell lysate. I kind of wash the C60, one, two, three. Sometimes it's super gummy and this helps break up that gumminess. And I will deposit that whole cell lysate into my tube, close it up and put it on ice. Very important to put it on ice. I'm currently done with my repa, so I'm gonna get rid of it, and I have one 1 1.5 ml tube of Gila whole cell lysate. Um, this is empty. I'm gonna take a quick peek at the um, microscope to see if it's empty. And after that, I'm going to throw it away in the trash because there's nothing on it. So now I'm going to spin down any parts of the cells that did not lyse. I'm going to use a fixed rotor um, centrifuge. There's a blank on the other side of this across the way. A handy trick that I do is that I put my lip at a place that I know where it's at um, so that I know that any pellet is going to be on here on that side even if I don't see it and I can stick my tip to the other side to collect my whole cell lysate. So I am going to spin this five minutes for the interest of time at the highest possible speed. And now my spin is done and you'll either see a pellet, um, which I'm not seeing, but it would be on that side of the tube um, and that's the stuff we don't want. In the meantime, I've labeled myself an archive labeled tube. It says Gila whole cell lysate, the date and my initials. I actually labeled the top as well so I can find it quickly. A little tip is that there's Triton in this whole cell lysate so you can easily wipe off your label. So I just use a little bit of scotch tape to keep that label in place. Pretty simple, I'm gonna avoid any kind of pellet um, which I know is on the other side and I'm going to just get my whole cell lysate out of this tube, taking it to the bottom and move it to this tube. More gracefully when you have two hands though. And here I have my whole cell lysate. I will put it into my ice until a time when I can find myself a beautiful little um, storage box. Hello people, I have a storage box and I'll put that whole cell lysate into my storage box and I will take it to my negative 20 degree chest freezer. We want to store this frozen. Okay, and there we go. We just made a whole cell lysate. I will clean up my area and I will get ready for protein quantification.